If the big one hits Tampa Bay this hurricane season, are you prepared? We've had our share of close calls recently, but with no direct hit in more than 100 years, many people have come to embrace an appealing myth that hurricanes always miss our area. But how safe are we from major hurricanes here in Pinellas County, and what can we do to protect ourselves and our families? In this episode of Discovering Pinellas, we'll talk to one of Tampa Bay's most experienced meteorologists, as well as a local historian and emergency management expert to get answers to those questions. Everyone loves a comforting story. Some people say an ancient blessing from previous inhabitants is shielding our water from major hurricanes. Others speculate that the bay's landscape and climate somehow repel large storms. In the past 20 years, local officials have ordered evacuations three times, and three times we've narrowly missed catastrophe. Many of our neighbors haven't been so lucky. ABC Action News Chief Meteorologist Dennis Phillips has watched the weather for three decades. I'm gonna ask him if there's any scientific explanation for Tampa Bay's long lucky streak. Since we haven't had a direct hit in 100 years, uh, you know, people have a lot of different theories about the Tampa Bay area maybe having a special protection or hurricanes never reaching this area. What, what's your take on that? Look, we're gonna have a major hurricane. I mean, it's going to happen. It's not if, it's when. That isn't hype. It, it's just a fact. We live in an area that is bound to see a major hurricane. Now, we have been fortunate, and we had close calls with Charlie, with Ian, with Irma, but I think the message is you've got to be prepared for when that happens, and yes, they are rather rare in the west side of Florida and central Florida for a number of meteorological reasons. But don't sit there and think, well, just because we haven't had one in decades, we're fine. Yes, we've been fortunate, but eventually it's going to happen. And you've got to know what to do in advance because if you wait too long, you're really stuck at that point. So why is it so difficult to predict the path of storms coming into the Tampa Bay area? The biggest concern for the Bay Area is a storm coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. And a hurricane that comes in from the south is always gonna to have to make a pretty hard right turn to impact us directly. Imagine it this way. If you have a car and you have your steering wheel and you just turn that steering wheel just a little bit, you know, maybe 100 feet down the road, you've only moved a bit, but five miles down the road, you could be in the Gulf of Mexico. So just a subtle change in that track, maybe down by Cuba or the Yucatan, could end up having a 300 mile swing in the ultimate landfall of this storm. 300 miles, that's the panhandle of South Florida. So Forecasting a hurricane with a hard turn from the south is almost impossible. And honestly, I'm not even sure we'll ever be able to do it. So when you look at a threat for the west coast of Florida, almost always, it really is the entire west coast of Florida. It's easy to forget this reality. A lot has changed here since Pinellas County last experienced a direct hit. The last major hurricane to hit Tampa Bay directly smashed through our coast just a few miles north of where I'm standing. But back then, there was no wall of hotels rising up from this beach. In fact, today there's nearly the same number of people living in just Pinellas County as there was in the entire state of Florida 100 years ago. One place that was forever changed is the barrier islands off the coast of Dunedin, where the hurricane cut a new waterway between what we now call Honeymoon and Caladesi Islands. I'm going to talk to local historian David Nupp about how that powerful storm changed life for early Pinellas residents and what a storm like that would do today. Honeymoon Island was not the same island it is today before the 1921 hurricane. Uh, what happened? Yeah, actually, uh, Honeymoon and Caladesi were actually one island. Um, this was known as Hog Island until the 1921 hurricane cut Hurricane Pass, as you can see behind me. 11 foot storm surge, over 100 mile per hour winds it totally changed the geography of our island out here. And tell me about some of the other impacts on the people who lived in Pinellas County at the time. So Pinellas County was very sparsely uh, populated and developed. Um, most of the settlements were along the coast and when the, the storm surge came in and the, the very fast winds, it was devastating to the area. They lost 50% of their citrus crop, something like 800,000 boxes of citrus. Um, it did $10 million in damage in 1921, which would be about $140 million today equivalent, and it actually killed eight people. And uh, you mentioned how sparsely populated the community was. What would be the difference in the impact today based on how much larger our population and our development is here in the county? 
So if you look back in Pinellas' population in 1920, it was about 28,000 people. And compare that to today, where there's nearly a million people, the, the damage would be catastrophic. You can really look back last year at Hurricane Ian and what that did to Lee and Charlotte counties and just imagine a, a county that has almost a million people in it. That would be utterly devastating to us. You know, some people, because we haven't been hit in over 100 years, have come to believe in sort of a legend about why we have a special protection. Can you tell me a little bit about that legend? Sure, so this is actually a relatively new urban legend um, that states that the, the indigenous people that were here before us somehow uh, struck a deal or maybe some kind of mystical bargain to protect the area from hurricanes. And as we can see through history, it's just not true. We've had an 1848 hurricane hit the area, a 1921 hurricane, and even a, a minor hurricane in 1946. So while it's comforting, it's just not true. As Tampa Bay watched Hurricane Irma churn towards Florida in September 2017, traffic backed up for hundreds of miles on interstate highways as hundreds of thousands evacuated from our coastal communities. But after that storm just barely brushed our peninsula, five years later as Hurricane Ian was heading towards Pinellas County, the public's response was far less serious, with fewer people checking into shelters and less traffic on the roads. Pinellas County kept a close eye on the storm, urging residents to prepare as Ian tracked toward our peninsula. Emergency Management Director Kathy Perkins was prepared to respond to the big one if Ian made landfall in Pinellas. She worked closely with county officials who ultimately issued evacuations for a large portion of the community. Kathy, the day after the storm made impact south of us and you looked at all the damage down there, what, what did you tell your staff about what could have happened here in Pinellas. Yeah, so somebody told me that we dodged a bullet and I really said, we dodged a bomb. Um, if you look at the level of devastation that was down there, it was catastrophic. A lot of lives lost, a lot of structures destroyed, um, access to the beaches um, taken out with the storm surge. Um, so that's the type of thing that we are preparing for. We could have seen that 10 to 15 feet of storm surge coming in. You saw buildings in the coastal areas getting wiped off of their foundation. You saw a surge going inland for up to 15 miles. Uh, people that lived along waterways actually saw water up to eight feet getting pushed in 24 miles inland. That could have been us. You know, it was a 20 mile shift as the storm came off of the coast of Cuba. That was the difference between uh, them getting us to our south and us getting it. So some people feel like hey, it's a lot of trouble to evacuate. You have to get your house all prepared, get your family out, and they just say, hey, I'd rather risk the odds. What would you say to folks who have that mentality? That storm surge is coming in is life-threatening, and that's the reason that we're moving people out of harm's way. We tell them from, to run from the water and hide from the wind. We want people to move outside of those evacuation zones. When that storm surge water starts coming in, you're not gonna be able to stop it. Uh, and unfortunately, we saw over 50 people uh, in Florida lost their lives to drowning during Hurricane Ian. What we say the top three things everybody needs to do to get ready for hurricane season? So I need everybody to make a plan. So the first thing you have to do is you have to assess what your potential risk is. Uh, do you live in an evacuation zone? Uh, how sturdy is your house? Uh, perhaps you have special needs or a loved one that's on some type of life-sustaining medical equipment that requires electricity. Maybe you live in a mobile or a manufactured home that's vulnerable to winds. Those are all the things that you need to consider so that way you know what you can plan for. The second thing I really need people to do is to stay informed. It's really important that people are paying attention to the official information that's coming out from emergency management. We'll let you know if we're going to be calling evacuations, who has to evacuate, when that will start, which shelters will open. We'll let you know about transportation and traffic issues. Uh, we'll give you all the latest information. So you can do that either by signing up for Alert Pinellas or downloading our Ready Pinellas app or going to our website at disaster.pinellas.gov. And then the third thing is be ready to take action. Uh, if that storm does continue to track towards us, we need to make sure that people heed the warnings and get to a safe place. Living in a coastal paradise comes with risks that we're tempted to downplay or ignore. But the evidence is clear. There are no supernatural or environmental protections that will always defend Tampa Bay from a hurricane. There is plenty we can do to protect ourselves. Let's all take special care to prepare this storm season. It could save your life or someone you love. Thanks for joining me.